angry guy here, and women will be begging men for Bitcoin. So women will be begging men for Bitcoin. The economy is completely in the gutter right now. Everyone is suffering. Everyone is struggling to survive. People cannot buy food. And women are really feeling the brunt of this. Most of them are living off the simp economy right now. And it's interesting because a lot of men, 30 million men have dropped out of the workforce. They're staying home. They're playing video games. They're sleeping. They're eating well. And they are disengaging from the economy by choosing not to marry or have children. These men have discovered that they don't need a lot to survive because men don't need a lot to survive in general. So they are living simple lives of luxury. Most men don't want to have a lot, a lot of things to clean up. They don't want a lot of, they don't want stress. You know, whenever you go into these homes and you're like, you see all of this junk all around you, it's, you know, women are the ones who go and buy all of this stuff. The tip, the average man doesn't want all of that garbage. And as a result of that, men are saving a lot of the money, their disposable income. They're putting it entirely in investments and investments and and in high interest savings accounts. They're earning tons of returns. They're buying rental properties. And, and then all of that income, that income is also going into an in, into further investments. It's 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 pretty insane. And I've said this already, you know, you're you're seeing these guys who make, let's say, fifty thousand dollars a year. But as a result of the fact that they found ways to reduce their cost of living to the point where they no longer have to pay large amounts of rent, you know, when you don't get married, when you don't have children, the, the prospect of being able to purchase a home cash, like purchase a condo in somewhere, some places for seventy to $100,000 becomes a reality. And, you know, you purchase your condo and then you, you know, you only end up spend having to like pay like, let's say 300, 200, 300 dollars a month, depending on where you live, no more than 500, you know, in upkeep. And, you know, because, you know, when you own a condo, like there's like a, there's the association and like, you know, you have to pay for like the upkeep of the building and so forth. But it's usually a very small fee. And as a result of that, these guys are basically living, living, <laughs> they're living, you know, without having any significant living expenses. So all of their extra disposable income is just going into the bank, it's going into investments, it's going into real estate. And that money that they're making from this, they're just further reinvesting it, they're putting it into cryptocurrency, they're buying Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin recently spiked back up, I think it was as of yesterday, which was February 24th, 20, I would say 2015, 2024, Bitcoin was back to $50,000 Per coin, I remember, you know, purchasing Bitcoin years ago for for about twenty, about two thousand dollars a coin, and it's kind of crazy to see that Bitcoin is now sitting at that high at that amount. And many of you remember, like, you know, I was selling my cryptocurrency courses. I have a lot of the courses coming back online for you guys. You guys will be able to pick up the courses and learn, start learning again because there's so many so many opportunities to jump back in, and there's a lot of amazing cryptocurrencies that will still allow you to become millionaires. You know, and have lots of just lots of disposable income. You don't have to become a millionaire, bro. You just have to. I mean, you know, once you have a couple hundred thousand dollars in the bank and you have income coming in on the regular, you can just chill. You really can just chill, you know, and you're seeing that happening right now. But for, as for women, women. You know, when it comes to cryptocurrency, it's still something that women just cannot do. The average woman cannot go on to an exchange purchase purchase crypto she's too afraid to do that even going to an atm the process it, it no matter what you know it's it's like there is a there's there is a learning curve with, with cryptocurrency and the average woman does not want to deal with the learning curve so while while bros are like purchasing purchasing crypto using paypal now uh, you know using paypal and and cash app and all these other places where you can buy your crypto that's the bros and you know these economies are huge they're generating billions of dollars for these companies that are now involved in crypto, but modern women still can't do it because there's such a large, there's, there's still a learning curve and they're not willing to do the hard work. The average woman doesn't want to have to use her brain. She doesn't want to have to do these things. She doesn't want to have to learn how, how cryptocurrency works and different kinds of cryptocurrency. She doesn't want to take the kinds of risks that come with crypto. But where we're heading is li literally like this. As the dollar continues to decline at, due to inflation, the value of crypto keeps on rising.
because crypto is limited. It's a, you know, Bitcoin is limited in supply. You cannot make more of it. And you know, there's a thing called halvings. And every time a halving occurs occurs on the Bitcoin network, it becomes harder to mine new coins, which then raises the value of Bitcoin. Not just that, a lot of people who hold Bitcoin are passing away. And I've talked about this before, that, you know, this is the first time in history where people are taking their wealth with them. You know, I have some of you guys who've literally said to me that you memorized the keys, you know, your, your the keys to your account. So basically, uh, cryptocurrency keys, you, they they can be like let's say 11, 12 digits, 12 uh, 12 digits in numbers long, and they're like alpha numeric. So it could be like one, two, a, b, seven, nine, a, seven, e, z, z, v, and so forth. And you have these dudes who are out here memorizing the keys to their accounts or memorizing the uh, the seed, which allows you to unlock and unlock a wallet if you forget the key and they're just, they're memorizing these things. They're storing them in their brains, and they don't give a damn. Like these guys are pretty damn wicked, you know. Like I would, I just would not go that far. But a lot of these men, this is how bad they are. They will, they they are memorizing these keys, and they don't give a damn. If they forget, they forget, and that money is gone. But they they are very happy knowing that even if that money, even if one day comes and they cannot remember that key, it doesn't matter because the government will never get that money. And these guys are passing away with those keys, you know, stored either in their brains or in places where they cannot be accessed. For example, they may have a ledger wallet and they use a password to log into that ledger wallet and then access their cryptocurrency. But if if no one knows that password, then that's the end of that. And they're taking, you know, and if they're, t- they're taking their cryptocurrency with them to the uh, to the to the to, to the next to the next world. You know, and that's the end of it. So this is a serious situation. And, you know, women are seeing what's happening. And, of course, the application of Bitcoin among women is slow. But as the value continues to skyrocket and they realize that, okay, this is actual money and it becomes easier and easier for them to access it, you know, as they translate it to dollars for them. You're going, you know, you're going, you know, they're, they're literally out there. They're already, there are women who are already on who are already begging for Bitcoin. And as the economy collapses and gets worse, you're going to be seeing more and women begging for Bitcoin. You know, and you know, we can see here inflation cools, but many Torontons this is happening in the United States, this is happening in the UK, this is happening in, in Canada, in, in predominantly white English speaking countries. Western English-speaking countries, you know, the inflation rate is destroying everything, it's destroying lives, people cannot afford anything, specifically women, because men are walking away and finding ways to survive and thrive, as I mentioned earlier. It says inflation cools, but many Torontons still cannot afford to eat. Proof is at the food banks, right? As at long, at long last, inflation has fallen. The consumer price index rose 2.9% in January, down from 3.4% in December. That's great news for, well, just about everyone. And of course, guys, you can see like these are food banks. And I've talked about how beneficial these this is. Like, look at this, guys. Cookies. Do you see these? Condiments. All right. Complete meal replacements. Cold drinks. Gatorade. Coca-Cola. Kool-Aid. Crackers. Okay. Guys, they will give you, they will give you meat. They will give you canned, all of these things. Some of y'all act like you're too proud. Y'all are out of your damn minds. Okay. Fine. Guys, you you you'll pull up your car. And it will give you $300 worth of food, all right? I have my course coming for you guys that's going to teach you how to live, how to do this, how to take advantage of this. Because some of y'all are wasting money right now. Some of y'all are wasting money that you are not, you shouldn't be spending. I'm just being so honest with you, okay? Because a lot of y'all, you live on you live on a pretty significant, on, on budgets. But think about this carefully. If your entire, it doesn't matter if your entire food bill is $600 a month or $1,000 a month. When you look at what you're purchasing, the fact that you can go to these pantries, these food banks, and you can, and you can basically take advantage of this system. This is what it's here for. Because most people are lazy. This is why some people, some people are like, never do this type of thing. You should always be out there working. You're an idiot. These people are idiots. These people are absolute idiots, absolute idiots, you know. There was a, I forget his name. He's always, he's always commenting, but you know, he talked, he was, this guy is in the military and he left an interesting comment on my video. I wish I, I would pull it up for you because I, I, I screenshot all of the comments, but he was in the military, I believe in the Marines. And he said that, you know, he, he basically began experiencing 
ED dysfunction. E dis, you know, dysfunction. So like the, you know, his 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 Mister, you know, Mister, Mister, uh, Mister, whatever, just wouldn't salute, and it was as a result of I believe like some something that happened in the, something that happened in the Marines, and he went to the doctor, and and he told the doctor he explained this to the doctor, and the doctor said drop your pants, and he go he drops his pants, and he basically ended up with a finger up the bum, and then he went into the bathroom and he goes, you know, he made him she cracked a joke about it. And he went to the bathroom, cleaned his butt, walked back out, and doctor says, "Okay, I'm submitting this." Boom, and he he got an extra like was it like one hundred and fifty five dollars, and but I think it was like one hundred and fifty five bucks a a month on his uh, on his military benefits, you know. And I want you to think about that. That's like that's that's almost an extra two thousand dollars a year, you know. That's almost an extra two thousand dollars a year. And some of y'all would scoff at that because you think you're too good for that. Let me tell y'all something. In this world, men as men, we live very hard lives. We live very, very hard lives. And if you're not willing to do what you have to do to survive and to thrive, then I, I don't care. I really don't care. If you're too proud to use these to use these places, guys, look at look at this. These are insures. Insures are in these boxes. Pop tarts, everything you could imagine. Everything you could imagine, and a lot of y'all are too proud. You think you're better than this? You want to keep on feeding the machine? Listen, I'm not telling you not to make your money, but you need to sub. You need to be smart about this. All right. If you can save a thousand dollars a month on your food bill, that's twelve thousand dollars a year to invest in your in to just buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin, invest in real estate. Invest in the stock market. Gamble your heart. Gamble to your heart's content. Put it in a put it in a savings account and earn a high interest savings account and just earn interest off it. Okay, because most of you are not going to. If you're a man, most of you are not going to spend it on anything. Because for the guy brain is interesting. Once you have your video games, your television. For many of you, don't even want a lot of that stuff. You know. You just don't have, you don't want anything else. The re, and part of that is that you don't want the clutter and you don't want the, you don't want the stress. A lot of men are minimalist because they don't want the stress of other items. They don't want the stress in their lives. Like me personally, most of the things that I own, I can fit into a nice backpack. I just got this MacBook Pro and a 15 inch MacBook Pro. And that is, I will admit it's, it's so big. It is pretty big. And I would have to like upgrade my backpack. So I have to get a larger backpack, but I mean, like even a travel on, even a travel on suitcase, these are size travel on suitcase is fine. And that's pretty much it, you know, and, you know, between aside from my electronics, you know, just stuff my electronics in and like, you know, my clothing and that's, and I can just pick up and take off very, very easily. I can pick up and take off very easily. And I think that's a reality that a lot of a lot of women can never appreciate about men. The fact that we can live like this, you know, because they're the ones that are struggling right now. At long last, inflation has fallen. The consumer price index rose 2.9% in January, down from 3.4% in December. That's great news for, well, just about everyone. As Bank of Amer Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Mecklem said last November, inflation is our common enemy not only because it creates financial pain and social up upheaval, but also because no one wins when inflation is high and volatile. However, this modest fall in inflation will not remedy the damage and precarious introduced, precariousness introduced by, by the events of 2020 and the inflationary run-up in, uh, it brought about. Sharp rises in inflation creates societal risks that, <laughs> that a a subsequent fall in inflation cannot so easily solve. To be clear, guys, we're when they say fall in inflation, they're typically not talking about deflation where the prices go down, okay? Because if you have deflation creates an entire set of other problems, what they're talking about is the slowing of the rise of inflation. So basically, inflation happens over, you know, year over year. What they're celebrating is the rate of inflation slowing down, not in inflation, not in deflation where the prices start to go down. So what they're saying is, oh, the prices have, it's not that the prices have gone down, the prices are just going up much slower now. So it's still $18 in some places for a Big Mac, but this year it's only 18, it was $18 last year. This year it's only 18 50 all right it's not like the previous year where we went from 
15 to 18. Now it's eight. Now it's only 1850. And you know, next year it'll only be maybe it'll be 18, maybe it'll be 819, you know, or nine or 1920, but it's not 19, 1929, you know, but it's not, it's not going up as bad as it was before. This is this is this is what we have to look forward to. And, and people cannot survive. A lot of people are just living literally off credit right now. Nowhere is this clearer than a Toronto than a Toronto's food bank. The inflationary run that began in 2021 didn't just aggravate food insecurity in Toronto. It transformed the problem into something wholly different and much worse. Food banks now serve serve a sombering one in ten Toronto uh, Torontonians. According to a report, I spoke to Neil Heather, um, Heatherton Hetherington. CEO of Daily Bread late last year. At the time, the country looked poised to see inflation fall just as it is now. This led me to ask Hetherington if he thought recent spikes in food bank attendance might soon fall too. Hetherington said the food bank usage across Toronto is not merely spiking. It has been growing exponentially and there's no end in sight, no end to this in, in, this growth in sight. Guys, people are losing their jobs. They're quietly firing right now. The, you know, the, the wages are not keeping up with inflation. You know, so this is, so, I mean, this guys, we're heading for a major financial collapse and it's, it's quite evident. It's quite evident, but men are fearing, men are weathering the star storm. And as I said, you're already seeing women begging, begging men for whatever they can get. You know, they'll take Bitcoin. They barely, they don't understand how to use it, but they'll take it. Guys, if you're enjoying the content, help get the channel to 100,000 subscribers on our journey to 2 million by subscribing to the channel. If you already have it, liking the video and turning on notifications, to never miss another video ever again. Women will be begging men for Bitcoin. I want to know your thoughts on this. So let's talk about it in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA, men walking away, and cheers.